Governments have made attempts to quantify global shipping emissions, but there's really no way to do that because no one is compelling them to be measured. No one is compelling governments to do really anything other than enforce these very minimal standards that the international community has agreed to at this point. In this country, there's no real lobbying effort in Congress because there's no one to lobby. There's no lawmaker pressing to create a law that will crack down on the problem, that will even address the problem. So in terms of money spent, the shipping industry looks a lot smaller than the problem really is because there's really no reason for them to go out of their way to draw any attention to themselves. The reason international organizations are having a hard time addressing this is because no one country has been able or willing to assert its own authority. And if no country steps forward, there's no such thing as an international government to create its own standards. If you look at the United States, we've actually been at the forefront of efforts so far to do what little can be done. There are standards that the International Maritime Organization recognizes called emission control areas. The U.S. and Canada have joined together to create one along most of the Atlantic and Pacific coastlines. Although there's a curious exemption even there, most of Alaska has been cut out of that proposal and it's not really clear why. The problem there is sulfur and nitrogen oxides and so forth can create problems for human health, but if you look at areas up in the Arctic, there are also all kinds of emissions from ships that melt polar ice, that create global warming problems, and if you don't control their emissions in places farther north where few people live but where the atmosphere is particularly vulnerable, you're not really getting at the problem.